Hey guys. So let's say that you guys have just gotten comfortable with Vim. You're used to moving around. You're used to jumping up and down, moving throughout a file. Um, but then you say, for example, you want to move to a different file and then you want to jump back and forth. Now, what a lot of people do for this is they'll just CD into the directory uh, and then they'll open up the file in Vim. Then when they want to change it, they'll close it, go to a different one, repeat, repeat, repeat. This can be a bit of bit monotonous, as I'm sure a lot of you guys could imagine. And what a lot of people opt for doing is using something like NetRW or um, NerdTree. And both of those are basically uh, file directory structures that you can look through, kind of like VS Code has something like that, or any other IDE pretty much has a similar thing. So a lot of people like to use that. Other people opt for using something like a fuzzy file finder, like FCF or COC, I believe, has it built in, as well as Control-P. So all those are great options if you guys want to use them. I personally just use Vim by itself and I have figured out a lot of different tricks and little additions to my VimRC that kind of make it easy to jump between files um, without adding any extra extensions that I have to rely on. Um, this can be useful for something like SSHing into a remote server or if you guys just like to try and do things a bit more of the Vim way. Uh, here are some really cool ways to do it. Let's jump into it. All right, so we're just going to be starting out with a uh blank vim, no configuration at all, and I'm just going to take you through each of the different ways that you can move around and different approaches to it. This all seems slow, inefficient, and silly. Uh, it'll eventually make sense by the end of this how you can move around. So the first thing you're going to want to do, and you can add this to your vimrc, is uh, set no compatible, and then you're going to do set uh, wild menu. So now that we've got no compatible and wild menu set, we're going to try and jump around different files. So for the first thing, what we're going to do is we're going to use the E. And because we have enabled wild menu, we can hit tab and it will give us a bunch of options for what we can do. But in this case, we're going to do ED tab and that will give us edit. And then we're going to try and get to a file. So if we just start hitting tab, it will offer us all these other files that we can jump to. Um, most of these are just directories and most of these are not even text files, but we're going to jump to just this one, for example. Let's go E, T, M, and let's open this other file. All right. So we've got this file and then I can do B tab and it will list out all the files that we've been to so far. All right. And what these are called is buffers. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get used to using buffers. So let's do E tab. Um, Let's open this other file, all right? So we've got this other file open now. All right, now if I do ls, we've got three different ones, all right? So let's try jumping around them. So we can do b space and then tab through them, or we can do b space mp tab, and it will only offer us the ones that have mp in them, or md tab, and then it'll offer us all the ones with md in them. So that can be pretty useful if you just remember part of an entire file's name or an entire path's name. All right, so now I'm gonna show you guys how to jump around with them. So sometimes you wanna just jump back to whatever last file you're using, jump forward to one that you had before, all that sort of stuff. So you can do BN for the next one that you have in your list of buffers, or BP to go to the one that's previously in your list. Um, I use this one a lot. It's uh, pretty convenient. I have shortcuts for most of these and I'll show those off in a bit. So right now I'm in a a uh, directory with a bunch of different files and a bunch of different projects in it. So I'm just going to go really quickly and show you guys how to jump to different ones. So say for example, I want to go to a file called statwe.c in a directory beneath me. So I'm going to go e, or I can go star star slash star statwe.c tab, and then it will give me the direct path to it. Bam, now I'm editing that file. And then say I want to go back to the one that I had before, b space tab, Bam. I can edit this other one, or I can do BP, BP, bam. There we go. I'm back to the file that I was editing before. Uh, BP, bam. And now we're all the way back to the file that I was editing originally before I jumped around a bit. Now, sometimes it can be convenient to be able to add a bunch of specific files. So say, for example, from this directory that I'm in right now, I want to add every C file. So I can do uh, arg add and then I can do star, star, slash, star, dot C. Bang. Now, if I go ls, 
I'm going to have a huge list of buffers of all the C files that I have, um, which is a bit much, but sometimes something like this can be useful. Say, for example, I'm working in a pretty large list of files and everything, and I want to be able to jump between them really quick. Uh, I can do this really easily from just doing this, and that took no time to add, and then I can do B space uh, stat tab. Bam. There you go. Uh, B space, uh, I'm trying to think of another one, IO tab. Bam. There we go. And then you can jump around to a bunch of different things. So something that a lot of people like to do is they often will set their path. So they'll do set path plus equals star star. And basically when you do this, you're setting your path, which is basically what Vim searches for in a lot of different ways for different files um, to basically everything below the directory that you open Vim in. So say for example, right now I'm in my home directory and I know that there's a file called tmp.md that is below me. So I can do uh, find, which is basically what you use to find anything in your path. And then I'm gonna do uh, tmp.md. And then I'm gonna hit tab, oh sorry, enter, and then it will open it for me. So now, bam, I'm in tmp.md, which can be pretty helpful. I can also do, um, let's do find temp, temp.md, which is a separate markdown file. And there we go, now it's opened up. This is my show notes, basically. Um, and I'm sure you guys can see how that would be useful. Something I wanna go over really quick is the ability to look at past files that you've edited. So for example, say I've edited a markdown file in the past, but I can't really remember its name. and I wanna look for it. What I can do is I can do this command filter, and then I can do basically what I wanna filter for. So let's do dot star uh, md. And then we're going to go uh, old files. Basically, old files uses your um, Vim info file to basically uh, get information about files you previously accessed. So now if I do that, I'll get a list of all the recent markdown files that I've edited. All right. And that's even after closing and reopening Vim. Something I want to cover really quick is um, about the wild menu. So like before we set the wild menu, and now you want to say customize it a bit. So you can do set, well actually let's go H for help, wild mode. And this will basically give us a bunch of different options, um, which can be pretty useful. Uh, I personally go with uh, this setting. Um, I'm not really going to go over how each of these works just because it can be a bit confusing and I think it's worth just looking at yourself in the documentation equals, and then I usually do longest, colon, full, comma, full. And I find that that's a bit more intuitive. Um, you guys can look at the differences and everything like that later. I don't really want to go into it. Basically, it allows you to get the longer option that closely matches what you have, and it allows you to quickly tab through without getting something similar to Bash, where it will all pop up as a list, and then you have to scroll down and close it all, it can be kind of a hassle, um, but that's just me. Something I also recommend uh, is set um, wild ignore, ignore case. And then this allows you to do, say for example, e doc tab, we'll expand that to documents. But if it's, um, if that's off and I do doc, it won't expand it. Finally, something I want to cover is wild ignore. So you can do set wild ignore, and then you can do equals backslash, and then basically you can use whatever you want to basically describe what you want it to ignore from putting in your wild menu. So that wild menu is that little pop-up thing up here. And so something I put, make sure is always set is I do dot star, uh, or sorry, backslash star uh, dot get slash backslash star. And so this basically tells it to ignore anything with uh, that's below git or includes git. Um, so basically this way I don't have any, all this extra stuff uh, getting in the way of my wild menu um, in my git subdirectories or dot git subdirectory. Something I think that's worth covering really quick is splits. So say for example, I'm editing a file. So let's just go etm. There we go. So I'm editing this file and then I want to edit, say another file, but I want to still be able to see this. So something I like to do is I use a split. So you can do create a split doing 
S sorry, S P L I split. And then you can do, so the other one, so TM. So there we go. So there's the, oh, there we go. There's the other one. I couldn't remember the name of the other one, but anyway, so I've got split and then this other file. So now when I hit enter, it will give me the other file and this file. So now they're both split. Um, by default, this will be above it. Currently, I just switched over to my uh, current VimRC just to make it a bit easier to show you guys some extra stuff. But anyways, this is how you make a split. You can also make a vertical split by doing V. And then there we go, now we've got a vertical split. Um, and the way that you jump between splits is you do Control W, H to go left, Control W, J to, I mean, Control W, K to go up, Control W, J to go down, Control W, L to go left. All right, so pretty simple. Um, I personally remap this to just Control H, J, K, L. Um, cause I personally use splits all the time. I never really use tabs or anything like that, but I'm sure there's plenty of use for that. All right. So now that we've covered a lot of the different ways you can move around between files and Vim, um, now I'm just going to show you some shortcuts I use to move around a bit quicker. Uh, so that way I'm not typing in that whole command every single time I want to use it. So let's start off with this guy. So and so here I have basically a shortcut. I do leader A, um, here my leader is space, so I can do space A, and it will basically give me all of the files in my current directory as a listing, and then say for example I want to do all MD markdown files, so I'll do dot D, bang, and then if I do ls, you'll see that all the markdown files are in my buffer list. Another one right here is um, leader B, and this is not really that much shorter. Actually, it's probably not really any sort of shorter in real life because you'd probably just do B and then you could just go type in the name as long as you remembered it. But the way that I do it is I do leader B and then it will list out all my buffers and then I can just type it in so I can do VI tab, bam, back to this file. Or TM, bam, and then it opens up this one. So now here's one of the things that I like to use. So I use this thing, which is basically a quick way um, to basically jump between a bunch of different files. So I do leader FP, basically go, gives me, enters this into the command line and then gives me the ability to basically do anything under this directory. So I keep most of my programming stuff in one directory um, and then I could jump down in between there. And then I have another command that allows me to jump between inside of that directory. All right, and then I have one for documents. I have one for my um, my notes. I have one for my .vim directory and one for my home directory. And now this one's actually pretty useful. So by default, when you guys use vim and you type in, um, actually let's do, so if I go, um, so I've got all of these options. Now, if I want to go to the next one and I hit slash, by default, it will actually just give you two slashes. But this basically allows you to do, so if I hit tab, and then I get this slash, if I just hit slash, it allows me to start completing again if I hit tab. Um, so if, for those of you that use ZSH, this is pretty similar to how that works. Um, I basically, um, I use NeoVim sometimes, and so I, there, NeoVim, uh, version 0 0.5 has a different mapping for this, but basically this just allows you to avoid putting in two slashes. All right, and this is one of my favorite ones. So say I do E and I want to do that star star slash star. Well, here's a really quick shortcut. The way that I have it is I could just do star 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 and it will add the slash automatically. This one's also pretty useful. So for this one, I can do E um, percent percent space and this basically expands out to the current file. It can be pretty useful if you want to like go back up in your directory structure and then edit a different file. Um, if you guys can imagine that, so like here's that. Anyway, so that's pretty useful. Um, here's just some reline, read line mappings. Um, so that basically, this basically adds me the ability to do uh, control A, control E, um, alt B, uh, Control F. Oh, I'm actually missing some of them, but I'll add those in later. But anyway, so it allows me to have a lot of the read line ma mappings in the command line, which is really awesome. Um, these are basically the wild menu settings that I covered earlier with their descriptions. 
Um, this one's not super useful, but I figured since I covered splits, I would just put these here. This basically makes your splits go below and to the right, which I find more intuitive, but this one's not super necessary. Um, cause by default, the split is actually above and then to the left. So kind of unintuitive for some people. Now, something that you'll notice is that if you have smart case set for your, um, for your uh, searching. So if I do E N N D, then it will match end. But if I do E N D, it will also match end. So my smart case is set for my search, but smart case will also um, basically change your command. And so basically um, change your command mode. So instead of having case insensitive, it'll be smart case. And smart case is basically if it starts with the capital, um, so G and then I hit tab, it'll only give me capitals. Um, I personally prefer to just use uh, um, basically ignore case. So this is basically how I avoid that. So really quickly, I'm just going to go over um, basically everything in here. So uh, basically everything in here is just basically a way to jump to the root of a directory. Um, this is specific to get, but it will uh, it will also work with other stuff. So um, if I'm basically, so right now I'm not in a Git repository. So if I do leader FF, it will just go with the current directory and then give me the star, star, slash, star, um, sort of stuff that I have, that I would like, if I would like to go deeper in the directory from where I am right now, but instead say I go to, um, if I go to my vimrc, which is in a Git repository. And then if I do, um, actually let's do E. Uh, let's just find, there we go. So now if I do, so this is the full path um, to the current file. So we're way lower than .vim, but if I do leader FF, it uses get to find the root of the directory and puts it in here. So it's pretty awesome. Thanks for watching guys. Check the description for a link to all the configuration I've mentioned. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys want to see more Vim content and hit me up in the comments if you guys need help with anything or have suggestions for a future video. Thanks. Have a great day.